Okay, friends, this is a Clock Prophecy Update for March 19, 2017. As I mentioned on the website a few days ago, yesterday, March the 18th, was the seven-year anniversary to the beginning of a visitation of the Lord Jesus in my home during the spring of that year. That visitation lasted for seven weeks until or approximately seven weeks until May the 12th, 2010. And I find it interesting that um, we've come seven years now from that point and that the visitation itself was roughly seven weeks, which seems to suggest a point of conclusion perhaps for us in 2017 in terms of our placement in the timeline Uh, prior to the opening of the seventh seal. Now you may know if you've read chapter 4 of my book, The Clock of the Four Night Watches, I explain that Daniel places the Lord's death inside the 70th and final week, which is why the modern church teaching of a seven-year tribulation cannot be true. In my book, I show why this means we entered what Jesus called the tribulation of those days, Mark, uh, the, Matthew twenty four twenty nine, with the fulfillment of Ezekiel twenty thirty four during Hitler's Holocaust upon the Jewish people at the rebirth of modern Israel. There is no other context in which Jesus uses the word tribulation except to describe the birth pangs of a modern Jewish state and our personal state of affliction during this time. Note that the words great tribulation have a somewhat separate and distinct meaning, which is a topic I discuss elsewhere at the website. In fact, I do teach that the Great Tribulation began in 2014 with the destruction of the Eastern Churches. Great Tribulation is an event that is marked by the casting out of uh, Satan and his angels on the clock, because that's where chapter 12 actually arrives on the clock. I further show in the book how the remainder of Daniel's final week most likely began on Yom Kippur in 2014 for reasons explained in the final chapter of my book. I also point to the Lord's return as early as Sukkot in 2018 or as late as 2020 based on the time allotted to us by King David David in Psalms 90 verse 10. Now I want us to look at the exciting possibility that a stellar alignment in September of this year may be yet another prophetic marker in our progression to critical mass on the clock. That means we are about to reach all the events of Revelation 13, the opening of the seventh seal, and of course, the rapture. Before I continue, let me repeat an important theme of prophetic fulfillment that we've talked about in past updates. It is the use of prophetic layers, or the repetition of a prophesied event, in a later and separate time frame. As just one example, a more historical approach to understanding John's prophecy of a 1,260 day period in the book of Revelation is that this would be uh, fulfilled when counting the years that passed from the advent of Catholicism in 538 AD until its near demise in 1798 AD. A portrayal of the beast and its recovery from a deadly head wound over a period of 1260 years. I see every reason to be in agreement with this interpretation. However, note that John refers to a period of 42 months in the same passage, meaning we should also understand this to be a period of 1,260 actual days. Why? Because John uses the Greek word menis, defined as a literal month wherever it appears. This is important because it means we cannot assume that certain key prophecies have been fulfilled in all their possible layers just because an earlier prophetic layer has already taken place. I suggest that we take a both-and as opposed to an either-or approach to Bible prophecy in order to see these remarkable dual fulfillments 
as a kind of signature of God's divine authorship throughout Scripture. I also encourage you to look at the importance of prophetic signs without making the assumption that these will give us the day and hour of key events they may be associated with. While such, while such convergences can and do occur, most often they will not come to completion until some later point in time. It is partly due to these prophetic layers that we cannot know the day or hour of the rapture or any other future event. Therefore, such signs must most likely point to imminence rather than to exact timing. Now I want to share why I'm excited about a celestial alignment that will occur in September of this year and why I now believe this to be a marker for the arrival of critical mass on the clock. The woman who stands on the moon while preparing to give birth, whose head is crowned with 12 stars and whose child is threatened by a great dragon before being delivered and caught up to heaven, is described by John in Revelation 12, verses 1 and 2. This rare configuration of stars and planets on September the 23rd of this year appears to match the symbology of this passage using what is called Stellarium, a computer program with the ability to project the positions of stars and planets many years in advance. This cosmic pattern will be found within and around the constellation Virgo, represented by the figure of a woman, as well as the addition of three planets that, when added to the nine stars of Leo, bring the total number of luminous bodies in the arrangement to 12. This does not, however, include the lower 12 stars that make up Virgo. In other words, there are 24 total luminous bodies in this pattern, which I find very interesting since we have 24 elders referred to in the book of Revelation. I also find it perfectly sensible that numerous stellar objects from various parts of our galaxy would be required to fulfill this very complex alignment. Note that a fourth planet, Jupiter, moves very slowly through the woman, specifically through the area analogous to her uterus, suggesting a birth event and thereby completing the symbolic narrative of the passage. Note that all of this culminates immediately after, rather than during, the Feast of Trumpets in 2017. John's birth depiction in this passage is normally taught as a reference to the birth of Christ to the Virgin Mary, who symbolically represents the nation of Israel and its twelve tribes. At the same time, we know the book of Revelation looks forward to a future layer of prophetic fulfillment in anticipation of both the Lord's bodily return, and the birth of the man-child, who is, of course, the church. I believe the delivery of the child in Revelation 12, in part at least, refers to the salvation of uh, Israel as a fulfillment of Paul's prophecy that the Messiah would be revealed to ethnic Jews after the times of the Gentiles had been fulfilled. Paul said that all Israel shall be saved in Romans 11, 25, and 26. It should be easy to understand why this union of Jews and Gentiles in Christ would bring about the completion of the man-child prophecy at the end of our age. If the stellar alignment in 2017 truly has prophetic significance, then we should find some connection to it on the clock. In fact, I have documented such a connection by pointing to the mathematical link between Revelation 12, 1 and Psalm 78, 13 on pages 38 and 39 of the book. The importance of this matrix, which is the sixth monograph in chapter 3, is that it refers to the moon at the woman's feet in Revelation 12 and to the first Passover, a new moon, in Psalm 78, exactly where both passages arrive on the clock in real time during the Blood Moon Passover in 2014. Again, note that this occurred at exactly the hour of the eclipse, a divine witness to the veracity of the clock prophecy. This is how we know that we are in fact living in the uh, prophetic timeline that Jesus described in Matthew 24. It appears that the um, 
star pattern in September is a reprisal of the Re- Revelation 12 depiction. But why should this happen more than three years after the arrival of that verse on the clock? Again, we are observing prophetic layers as a demonstration of God's divine signature in Scripture, not because we can use them to give us the day or hour, but to heighten our vigil during this critical period of our watch. In light of the foregoing, let us consider the 42 months of John's vision and see if there is any numeric link between Revelation 12.1, where it fell on the clock in 2014, and the constellation alignment taking place in September of this year. When we add 1260 days to the date of the blood moon Passover in 2014, which was April the 15th, 2014, the result is September 26, 2017. This is an exciting result because it falls on September the 26th, just three days after the celestial alignment and immediately after the Feast of Trumpets four days earlier. Please remember, however, that we are not confined to a 24-hour period of fulfillment for any prophesied event, and thus our watch in September will not be limited to either one of these dates. Could it be that this heavenly sign in September points to the rapture? It may well be pointing to the removal of the 144,000, which is most likely the barley portion or the early portion of the harvest, which represents the first group to be taken, as Jesus prophesied in his vineyard parable in Matthew 20. I cover this fully in chapter 5 of my book, explaining what Jesus said about rapture timing and also the fact that it will will not be a one-day event. I personally expect our exodus to take place over a period of one complete watch on the clock, or about 521 days. In closing, um, let me just uh, make sure that you know that the uh, website version of this update has some additional details that you may want to have a look at. I also want to remind you that my understanding of our place on the timeline points to the imminence of the Psalm 83 war, two large meteor impacts described by John in Revelation chapter 8, and a near-fatal head wound that Barack Obama appears to narrowly survive. Now, the fact that uh, Obama did not remain in office and that instead Trump won the election suggests to me that the nature of events that now must transpire will be even more dramatic than what we might have expected. There can be no doubt that these events in combination will bring a level of social upheaval unlike anything we've seen during our lifetimes and certainly on a global scale. Once the seventh seal has opened, we know the early raptures will begin and the Antichrist will take power. God bless as you continue to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Behold, I come quickly. This is Peter John Bramble.